the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. Holy cow, could it be the inaugural inauguration of the quad core PC? And the thing didn't even explode, I don't even understand it. We went 30 whole minutes. I'm so confident, so confident in this episode. I actually have hit record. You know I don't hit record like hardly at all. For those of you keeping track at home, these are not numbers that we had a week or two ago. This is exciting, this is huge. Mm. By the way, in case you're wondering, you have stumbled into a tragedy wrapped up in something terribly depressing. It's uh, the BB Live Show. Nothing more than a toddler beating on a drum. That's me, yours truly, Brian Brushwood. Occasionally, we have moments of brilliance. This may or may not be one of them. If you want to join us, you can always join the show by contacting us. You can Skype in at BB Live Show. Not yet. We're not quite ready for you. Toll free at 866-462-4424. Again, not yet. We're not quite ready for you. If you want to find out when the shows are coming up, you got to make sure to head on over to twitter.com slash wood. How are we doing? How's the audio sound to you guys? I'm checking in with the chat room, for those of you who don't know. In fact, here, let's bring you guys down. We'll introduce you to all the nice people. There we go, the chat room. Y'all, if you head on over to bbliveshow.com, you can actually... Uh, participate. You can join in, get yourself a handle. And as the title there implies, today we're talking about pedophile haircuts, failure, and mashups. We'll go ahead and start with failure first. Uh, how many people, first of all, uh, success, right? Okay, I made, the, I made the mistake. In my hubris, I actually spoke the words, let's see if we can break the new quad-core PC. And I think we lasted about how long? Like, um... I don't know, five seconds until uh, until we crashed the thing before. Yeah, I think it was two seconds, according to the chat room. It was a disaster. So we did our ghetto version where I hand wrote all my notes and messages on a crappy USB camera. I was so depressed. I was so depressed after that experience. I did not go to bed. I just promised that tonight would be epic. And I actually stayed up until four in the morning completely. I torched the operating system. I was like, okay, maybe it's XP. Maybe a more modern operating system would uh, would help it. So I torched everything, installed all of Windows Vista, that whole laborious process, and I was super careful. I only installed the exact things that mattered. I didn't install any extraneous drivers. Got through the whole thing, <laughs> and then and then uh, got to like at four in the morning. Literally, I had the exact same problem that we had. At last night, like the thing would work once when it installed and never again. This is a, a camera. We're trying to get better cameras, trying to get off the USB webcam because now we're using the flash media encoder because we have the, uh, you know, the quad core PC. And so we, we can do higher quality. So that's what we're trying to do. So anyway, went to bed totally depressed, slept exactly four hours, uh, tried to go back to sleep, but I was too angry. And uh, then got up and decided that maybe Vista was the problem. And so I torched Vista and reinstalled XP. And then eventually uh, we figured out that what was happening is that the USB, all the USB crap has poorly written drivers and that it actually seems to be overriding each other. My friend Nexus 6, Colin, he calls it uh, DLL hell, which I think is a pretty good, uh, pretty good analysis for how I was feeling. But here's the triumphant, uh, the, the happy, happy upside to everything. So finally, uh, and this is, this is I've been talking to, to Mike, the, the creator of VidBlaster, who's been working, and I'm describing my problems. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen anything like that. And, uh, and finally, we figured out that has nothing to do with VidBlaster. It's my drivers and the, the, the products that I'm using. But here's the best part is uh, he, he actually recommended, well, no, 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 don't use DV because DV is kind of hinky, and you never know when it's going to work. But DV, the DV camera, this one right here, is the only one that's never failed. So on a hunch, I, uh, I actually had Captain MG. He drove all the way up to North North Austin. It was like a hundred miles round trip, 50 miles there, 50 miles back to pick up a couple of spare old cameras that my good friend CJ Johnson had. And we plugged it in and I am proud to announce that we have two 
fully operational DV cameras, and they're not even, uh, uh, there are no webcams attached right now. We're going to try setting up a third as well, but isn't that awesome? Yep, da, 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 da. I'm very excited about that. And the quality, I think, is really good, too. The other thing we're doing is we're using the Flash Media Encoder, which uh, I'll give you a little, a little view of what that looks like. That's, uh, that's this thing right here. Well, of course, when I click on that, it makes it go away. But, uh, but it actually translates, uh, translates real time. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. That's some trippy psychedelic 70s action right there. And uh, this is what's making the quality hopefully be considerably better. I don't know. Thumbs up, thumbs down on the quality. Last time you guys checked in, it was probably pretty, uh, pretty nasty. So let's get started with today then. I actually wrote out, uh, you know what we're going to do? I guess, first of all, uh, let me go ahead and open it up at this point. If anyone wants to give a call, feel free to give a call or join in, especially if you want to, uh, uh, I don't know, taunt me for my ghetto rig last night. That was pretty insane. I could tell I've shocked some of the people in the chat rooms by actually doing show prep. This is, uh, when I say show prep, that's really fancier than it actually is. It's actually a notepad where I wrote down stuff that I really ought to talk about, which is way, way less interesting. But there is one thing, before we do anything, actually, and I'm very excited about how everything's working and stuff, I'm actually mainly excited about that. In fact, what's cool is, is I can put all of this on, and, uh, and it still says uh, 12%. Very excited about that. But... R literally right as we were getting ready to get started here we got a call from uh from uh, dj z the guy who does uh, many of my favorite mashups and he sent over a torrent of links now i have not actually heard any of these actually i have heard one of them but i thought we'd listen to go and start off with a uh with a dj z mashup let me get that turned on there excellent and now uh this one this is the one i heard before and i really liked uh and it's uh Wait for it. Here we go. Uh, this was called Kung Fu Child. Is that a good level? Should I turn that up a bit? Here we go. <laughs> moments when you're like, holy crap, it actually is working. turn a little bit into a radio show but you gotta show respect you gotta you gotta listen no nobody's calling in actually this is a good one No dancing. It's hard for me to want to dance with them by myself. We gotta, we gotta get some other people in there with me.
from the, in the chat room, they say it's now a radio show until he gives weather and traffic updates every five minutes. Don't forget, it's Weather on the Five here at the BB Live Show. I'm your host, Brian Brush, with the BB himself. Stick around, because coming up, we got future mashups by DJ Z. Until then, let's get back to the music. That's a little sad that I did that. Like that. See, the only reason you notice that that we're just listening to the music is normally I play these when I go to, I mean, take a take a break when I go to conduct business. Uh, and then we, we fade out and we say, and we're back once again. It's Brian Brushwood. Uh, see, I don't like it when I sound too professional. For some reason, that freaks me out. Uh, let's go in. Let's go and take some calls. Let's get somebody to call in, uh, especially if you want to harass me. Look at that, just like that. Somebody's on the Uvu line, and it's it's Amtrekker from the Streamies himself. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is too exciting. Hold on, we got to see if if he's able to connect effectively. This is the first test of the uh, of the quad core rig. For those of you who don't know, Brett Rounceville, the Amtrekker is uh, a supreme badass. He hosts his own podcast, which I'm a tremendous fan of. Uh, let me set the screen capture area on this. Oh, and we have video. Brett is are you still down you are you still go. down in uh are you still down in LA for the uh for the big uh, shindig um, down there? Hold on, time out. Trying to ditch the second audio here. All right, perfect. There we go. How's uh, everything looking for I'm, you? No, I'm not in LA anymore. I'm back up to Fresno, the wonderful world of Central California. Are you, are you going to be around? Uh, I'm I'm going to be in the San Francisco Bay Area this weekend. Really? Yeah. What are you, days? What's that? I, I get on on I get on on Friday and uh, leave. I'm thinking Monday morning ish. That's you can tell I'm obviously very committed to this schedule that I've picked. Yeah, I um, well, I'm gonna be in San Jose on Thursday for a pizza eating contest. Of course and, you are. Uh, Why wouldn't you be? Yeah, really, right? Um, I can't imagine any what any other reason to ever be in San Jose besides uh, pizza <laughs> or and, a pizza eating uh, contest. See, that's that's how the Amtrekker doesn't mess around. It's like some people would go there to eat pizza, <laughs> not not bread. He goes there to eat the most pizza. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, you guys want to go out for drinks tonight? I don't know. Is it a competition? <laughs> it is now. So, uh, <laughs> real quick, for those of you guys who don't know, Brett Rouseville was nominated for a Streamy Award for Best Travel Podcast. Is that what it was? No, for the Streamies, it was big time. Best Reality or Documentary. What? That's like being up for Best Picture. Yeah. yeah, I got beat out by William Shatner. Shatner! Ah, uh, screw his shat. Yeah. Well, so uh, what was it like? Was it? I mean, they they were talking on the like reading the comments about it. I I heard talk of a red carpet, and uh, they made it sound pretty epically huge. It was pretty serious. It was way more Hollywood than I expected it to be, too. I didn't. uh, I I saw so few people that I actually recognized there, and that blew my mind. Well, I think uh, I think one of the things like right now it's the early days of online content, and they're sort of having a contest right now to establish which are the real award, like which are the Oscars and which are the Golden Globes, you know, which are the joke awards. Yeah, exactly. Is it the Golden Globes that everyone goes to just to get smashed? Like, like it's hilarious to watch their <laughs> acceptance speeches because they're all drunk. Have you heard that? Uh, I wish I knew. I know that MTV Music Awards are always, or Movie Awards are always the best ones to watch. Yeah, because they're, the, they're out of control. They're the ones where people don't even care. So I think, uh, I think the idea is, is I think that's why they went all out, is because whoever can look the most respectable by default kind of becomes the most real. Like I know the Webby Awards, they don't mess around e- either. They really kind of put on a fancy, fancy show as well. Yeah, this definitely tried to be very Hollywood. They didn't care about any of the San Francisco types, or uh, I was. It blew my mind that I was nominated at all. But um, mostly, it was like Neil Patrick Harris and that chick from Dollhouse. And uh, wait, Eliza Dushku or award, which, which which chick from Dollhouse? Sierra. Oh, really? What was she up for? I don't think she was up for anything. She was just hanging out. Oh, she, she was, was just there. there. With the Joss Whedon fan club. Uh, by the way, I uh. Uh, finally, we should we should talk. Have you been watching Dollhouse? 
I have, yeah, and it's getting really like, good, right? Okay, all right, don't tell me too much because what's funny is we watched the first four episodes and literally uh, my wife Bonnie was just like, you know what, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not getting it. And like in the next episode is the episode five where, where – uh, spoiler alert if anyone's – you know, that's where uh, – uh, that's where the neighbor is revealed to have some interesting things going on, and uh, and there's an interesting twist with uh, a whole bunch of stuff and some reaching out moments and stuff. And uh, I I really felt like the show turned a corner. I'm excited to watch episode six and beyond. Yeah, there's some good stuff going on. It's very clearly is uh, it very clearly happened to be that like the first four episodes are literally just setting up. Up the world that they're in and they're all just one-offs it's sort of like you know here's a one-off here's a one-off here's a one-off and yeah. uh, and then and then they punch you in the nuts with episode five so uh you know i don't know if it's quite a firefly yet because firefly really had its hooks into me by by episode three or so but uh but i'm still i'm i'm uh, renewed in my interest of giving it a chance yeah i didn't see firefly until like last year so i watched them all back to back to back yeah but i was hooked like pilot episode as soon as uh What's his butt? Like shot that dude instead of negotiating with him. I was sold. <laughs> You're like, hey, that's that's who Han Solo used to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's like there are, there are like five stages, or I, I guess there's three main stages that happen when you're when you're watching Firefly. It's like at first. You're like, oh well, this is kind of good. I like it. This is cool. And then like the middle, the middle episodes, you're just like, man, this is really good. And then when you hit those last third, you get like really angry because you realize they're about to be over, and this thing was 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 screwed from the beginning. And uh, I, I don't know. That's what I went through. What about you? Yeah, totally. I, I distinctly remember that feeling of being like episode ten and not wanting to watch the next four. I was like, I don't even want to know what happens because you know it's not good. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, so uh, so tell uh, can can you take us through what it was like what it was like at the streamies? Yeah, like I said, it was way Hollywood, right? So I show up in my uh, dirty silver Saturn Ion <laughs> and uh, pull up nearish the red carpet. Near, near enough that uh, no one's going to go, hey, who's the guy in the dirty silver ion, but uh, far enough away that I'm not walking for decades. Right. And uh, I get there, and it's just like this sea of people, and uh, they're all much prettier than I am. I doubt and that. And they've all apparently bought their dresses, whereas my date made hers, and frankly, she is more awesome for it. But um, <clears throat> the the red carpet thing was all kind of a hoopla. They had already set up the interview with most of the big people and so again I was like the little guy there like nominated or not I was still very clear like very clearly like and also ran That's and interesting. Uh, the only person that recognized me there for the first half hour was Alex Albrecht ah so uh, were yeah, they there goes, were they oh, I guess and I'm like oh thank god someone that knows me Dig Dignation was nominated right <laughs> Dignation was nominated for something and then Alex was nominated on his own as best host oh good for him it was, uh, Which it was, you want, actually. So oh, good. Oh, double congratulations for Alex. You know, I didn't even look yeah. at To be honest, I, I, I paid attention. I was so excited for you, Brett, that, uh, that that's the only <laughs> one I really paid attention to. I was like, oh, screw you, Shatner. And then uh, then it was all over. Yeah, that guy. we got to find a way. He's got to go down. Oh, uh, don't worry. He'll die anyway. But, um, okay, so so red carpet thing was, was kind of interesting, but, like, very Hollywood, but very small. Hollywood, like the red carpet didn't even lead up to the door, which I guess now that I think about it, who knows if the red carpet ever leads up to the door. Right. But um, You know, in fact, just... <laughs> I bet more often than not it doesn't, now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah, it never, I never gave that any thought whatsoever, but it was actually like perpendicular to the door in front of it, so it crowded the whole situation, kind of. Well, that's cool. <clears throat> and then I ran to Eileen there, Tom and Eileen, uh, oh. not my parents, but... Um, your producer. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, yeah, the the lovely uh, Eileen Rivera and Tom Merritt from Buzz Out Loud, uh, who I got to drink my snot juice on stage at uh, <laughs> <laughs> at uh, South by Southwest. Uh, speaking of which, and uh, apparently, like I got twitters from Eileen saying uh, saying totally like, OMG, Neil Patrick Harris just sat down like seven rows in front of me, uh, and and I don't know if I told you this, uh, uh, but but. I got an inside track. We got a bit of a scoop here. I, I don't know. This might be privileged information. I, I think not. But you know about my uh, my excitement over my new Twitter follower, right? Oh, yeah. I did see that. Willow. Yeah, right? exactly, right? Well, she uh, uh, she Twittered to me uh, saying that uh, – because uh, she mentioned her husband's a tremendous fan of, of the show. And I volunteered to, you know, you know, 
offer him tips or whatever. But uh, but she was like, yeah, he doesn't even know that we're talking. Uh, but uh, which all of a sudden that felt weird. But uh, I I <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned something, or there was some moment where she mentioned offhandedly, and it was the coolest Twitter ever because it said, oh yeah, plus Neil parentheses Patrick Harris. Also loves scam school, <laughs> and I, what I loved is that no she, was, she was just straight up saying, saying, uh, you know, That's oh awesome. Neil, Neil's a huge magician, right? Oh yeah. Well, well as a matter of fact, uh, Neil Patrick Harris is actually on the board of directors at the Magic Castle now, and he's been a, a magic, a magic uh, aficionado for years and years, and a totally, totally huh. cool guy. Very excited about that. Yeah, that's exciting for me. That is awesome. But uh, did you get to meet uh, uh, Doctor Horrible? I didn't meet him. I like I was sitting probably three rows in front of uh, Tom and Eileen on the aisle seat because they wanted to make it appear that I might have a chance and would need to get up. Right. Oh, that's sweet of them. So he was basically sitting like catty corner from me. But again, he's much more important than I am. Oh, that's all right. He's not as good looking as you. Though. <laughs> that's the important thing. So uh, o- overall uh, now, is, is it total BS or was it really an honor just to be nominated? Um, it was pretty rad to be nominated. I think what it did for me more than anything was like cement the idea that I have to like kick ass over the next 12 months because it is becoming so Hollywood out there and you either put up or shut up, shut up now. It's like no more of this guy with an eight year old camera swinging in, uh, out of the dust and making something happen. Look, you are not kidding. I mean, that's, uh, uh, you're seeing it with Twitter. Uh, the grownups are coming in is what it boils down to. You're seeing it yeah. with Twitter and, and they're coming in and they're sweeping aside us, us, us teenagers. Uh, and, uh, and to be honest, that's why, that's why I'm upping the ante on, on this travesty, uh, of the, uh, the toddler beating on the drum, the, the BB live show. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, there we go. I was a little bit late on that graphic there, but uh, <laughs> now we're back. Um, man, that's great. So, uh, uh, what else is going on? Um, freezing and losing sound, Brian. I don't know if that's uh, that's our side or on theirs. Oh yeah, you know what? I'm watching it on the server, and it does look like we're having some kind of issues there. Mm. Ah. How's your CPU usage looking? Uh, you know the CPUs are actually looking pretty sweet. Let me get the CPUs on here. Because I love showing off my <laughs> my fat CPUs. There we go. So whatever it is, it's not whatever the problem is. It is not the CPU. <laughs> I can verify. <laughs> so um. Oh hey, so uh, you want you want to stick around, Brett? Actually, because you I noticed you called on the Uvu line, which leaves the Skype line for anyone who wants to call in. Yeah, you bet. All right, well, let's do this. Let's do, uh, if you want to join us on the air, give us a call. You can Skype in over at BB Live Show or go ahead and call toll-free 866-462-4424. Anything's on the table. You guys could call uh, whoever, whoever, wherever. By the way, I don't know if you were listening, uh, Brett, when I when I mentioned how I trashed the booth of Uvu at uh, South by Southwest. I actually spilled beer all over their place. Did, were you, did you hear about that? How is that any different from what you do to Uvu in the company of your own home? Well, I mean, but it's my Uvu, and I'm shooting my Uvu all over the place. But this is, I actually went right up to their face, and I spilled Uvu all over it. Nice. Straight to the source. So Straight you don't to the have source. to do it at your place. It's like wholesale slaughter instead of just retail slaughter. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. That's always a disappointment. I thought somebody was Twittering in about the show, and instead it's CJ saying that he ate Chinese food. By the way, I want you to know, Brett, I, I was <laughs> going to call you. Hold on. We actually have somebody Skyping in here. Um, let me allow this, and I'm going to pop out this video here, and then I'll move this down here so that we're not blocking Brett. Uh, I was going to call you to ask if you wanted to join in the show today, but then I decided not to because I wanted to do like a whole Brett Stravaganza episode where we talked about, not only did we talk about the streamies, but we also uh, played the videos from Wolf Manor. But but I don't have those videos in front of me. So oh, I so blew half your next show for no, you. No, 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 that's good. Such that a means we get, we get to do another, another twofer show. That just means we're doing a twofer show right now, and we'll do another one later. You know, this is, oh, there we go. We finally have squeaky pants coming in. Let me, oh, son of a bitch, hold on, let me, let me get this, <laughs> let me get this worked out, oh, I hate you, slash love you, squeaky pants, um, <laughs> all right, squeaky pants, uh, you're on the air, what's going, what's going on, <laughs> this is the feed that squeaky pants is sending, is it going, 
or is it <laughs> or is it uh oh there it is now it's going i don't have audio for you though bud let me see if i can fix the audio i don't know what's up with that no i uh this would probably be funnier if we had if we had audio should probably play the it original. It may, in fact, be a brushwood. It may, in fact, be a shwood. This is the old version with the moth. By the way, uh, here's the thing. Can I say something real quick? If if you if you wake up earlier than you would like, you know, earlier than usual, and what I have a tendency to do is I'll grab a Diet Coke and I'll come, you know, blindingly, you know, into the office. I'll sit down at the computer and I'll just read something just to get my brain started. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, I'm going to read this one article and then I'm going to go back to sleep. Uh, what, whatever you do, don't uh, don't read an article titled. Uh, you know, I think I'm having some connection issues here. Don't read an article titled "The Seven Most Horrifying Parasites on the Planet." That uh, oh, good God. <laughs> that turned out to be a mistake, uh, and especially. I don't even want to see that image. Um, I, there, there's a guy pulling a worm no, out of his foot. That's a good one. No more. No more. <laughs> um. And then that's the size of the worm when it comes out. Oh. And that's oh, the God. measurements on the worm. There's another worm coming out. <laughs> oh, but here's God. okay, here's the I crazy need to one. Sleep eventually. No, no, no. This is Cymothoa exigua, and this is the one I should oh, not yeah. have read. This is a parasite. Well, don't read it to me. Then. This Why is a parasite. This is a parasite that oh, that God. attaches itself ah. to the tongue. Ah. It attaches ah. itself to the tongue ah. of a fish. Hold on, hold on. Here, let's we'll do the split the split screen between you and uh, and the fish here. There we go. That's <laughs> we've got uh, we've got <laughs> we've got Brett Rouseville. So here's the thing. This thing attaches itself to the tongue of a fish, and it slowly sucks the blood until it atrophies the tongue down to nothing. Are you ready for this? Here's the killer part. The creature then takes the place. Of the tongue. It performs the function what? of the tongue. It takes over what? the mother freaking tongue. And uh, and look at this. Like, so like, the parasite wasn't that red thing. It was the no, 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 reddish yes. pink thing inside? Yes, there it is. Look at that. Oh, That's your shit, money shot that right gross. freaking oh, oh, there. Oh, my mother. Oh, and they have to live with it for the rest of their lives because they don't have any freaking tongue. Oh, mm. good God, no. <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so here's the, so, okay, so I'm reading this, I'm reading this, <laughs> I read this and, uh, and, uh, uh, you know what, here, let me, let me adjust this over to, <laughs> um, I probably should have done this this way. All right, so I, so I read this and, Ugh. and I'm, and I'm like, oh, that was a very interesting article and I decided to go to bed and every time I close my eyes, it's it's that's all I see. Oh, God, that bad. is all I see. And I'm just laying there trying to sleep. And I'm like, mm, ice cream, muffins, puppies. Ah! Oh, and uh, my God. I, I did not fall asleep. Right. So I literally only got uh, four freaking hours of sleep. It was disgusting. <clears throat> hey, Brett. Ah! <laughs> That'll never get old. Uh, I should probably you know save what? that. There's nothing worse than trying to unremember something. I just read a Twitter today from Veganism, who I follow because of my whole month of, of veganism. And uh, they were talking about all of the blood and pus in cow milk. And I just have not been able to drink milk all day. And I'm terrified that I will never be able to unremember that. Uh, and please, God, don't tell me what that is. Uh, well, actually, this is this is a worm. No. I What, the, what part of don't? <laughs> This is a worm that crawls inside. A, it's a tiny, tiny mite, and it goes inside. Oh. It goes inside a grasshopper. I'm gonna vomit on Charlie. And it grows. Here's the thing, though. It can only it can only survive in water. But grasshoppers, they don't get in water very much. They're pus- too busy hopping on grass. That's why they're not water hoppers. They're grasshoppers. This thing oh. freaking controls its mind and causes it to commit suicide. You want to see video of it? Via water? Like, cause it, it to Yes, jump in water? it jumps into the freaking water and kills itself. Oh, oh shit, fuck you, that's horrible. Oh my god, is that the worm in the back there? Yes, it's bigger than the whole freaking thing. Look at that! Oh my god! That freaking worm! You gotta be kidding me! What the hell just happened? Can you explain to us what we just witnessed? 
It is one of the most spectacular instances known of behavioral manipulation of a host by a parasite. The matter of morphed hairworms, when juvenile, are parasitic in anthropods, mainly terrestrial species, including insects, such as crickets and grasshoppers, and spiders. But they are free and aquatic when adult. During their development, they grow from a microscopic cyst oh to my a God, huge, that thing's worm, huge whose size often exceeds oh, that of the host by a considerable amount. Once they reach this stage, they alter the behavior of the host by making it commit suicide by jumping into water. It can be said that an infected grasshopper, for example, that jumps into water does not do it willingly. Yeah, Rather, he's gonna it is die. the parasite's genes that are being expressed in the behavioral phenotype of the infected host and instruct it to jump. To study this phenomenon, we used an approach known as proteomics, carried out by right, David Blah, 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 science, science, science. Show us the parrot. Look at that. Insect. Furthermore, we have empirical proof that these dude, proteins dude, are physically that is, oh that is not for reals. That is some kind of space alien from a science fiction. Look at that thing. Present in the insect's oh central nervous system. Hence, the parasite is able to induce these proteins Directly. Holy God! Where the research becomes no more, interesting no in terms of public they said, health, oh, wait, 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 wait. You stream just said I was doing magic. Transmitting diseases to humans are themselves manipulated by pathogens and parasites. Hold on, hold on, just a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We may, we may have a miscommunication here. <clears throat> uh, did I get this right? Did you stream just Twitter out that I was doing magic? This is fantastic because for my next trick, <laughs> 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 for my next trick. I will transform you into an object of horror through the magic of the mosquito by injecting you <laughs> with, by injecting you. Ah, that's you now. <laughs> oh, good God, look at that. Come on, dude, look at that. Oh, my that's... God. His leg was eaten by an oak tree. That's horrible. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so so this one, this one's different. This is a, like a giant mosquito thing. Or, no, no, mosquito inject that's a parasite. So that blocks like lymph lymph nodes to something, and apparently lymph is what causes all your fluids to go in the right place at the right time. And apparently, when you don't have control of your lymph nodes, you turn into a tree. Apparently, that's in, that's that's elephantitis. In, oh. if, in case you were wondering, that's uh, this is uh, man, this this show is taking a turn. It looks like a cork oak. Okay, now this Forget this one. Cork is super. If you need the Latin name on that one. This last one. This last one I had heard of before. This is, uh, uh, and in fact, they don't give it, um, uh, they don't give quite the science that I wish it did. But uh, but this is this is one called uh, Saculina Car Carcini, I believe. Saculina Carcini. In fact, I memorized it it's when huge. I read this article. Yeah, this is this is it right here. This uh, genital uh, palpitation. This is not Saculina. Uh, you would think, <laughs> you would think with a name like Saculina. This is all. By the way, I'm just reading all the jokes straight out Saculina's of Cracked.com. Uh, this is all an article at Cracked.com. I highly recommend all of their stuff. Very good stuff. Uh, where the and the, the subtitle here says where the crab's genitals used to be. That's Saculina. And uh, uh, okay, here's no, the cool not one. That thing again. All right, no, no. Here's the thing. Okay, this guy is unreal. This guy crawls uh, into. He starts off in crap. In, in bird crap, and a freaking uh, a freaking uh, uh, what do you call it? a snail goes over the bird crap and sucks him up, and then he's like, well I don't want to be in a snail, I want to be in a bird. How the heck am I going to get in a bird? I well birds don't usually eat snails because they got these big shells, right? So I know what do birds eat? They eat um, oh yeah caterpillars. Well I've got a funky idea. Why don't I crawl up into the eye stalks of the freaking snail? And make them oh. look like freaking caterpillars. Is that unreal? And so then, oh, and there's then nothing more terrifying than parasites. A bird, <laughs> nothing at all. This is like I am not going to sleep for three weeks now. This is horrible. A bird, uh, and, and this is actually worth looking at, actually, right here. But the bird, uh, no, no, nothing that you have shown me <laughs> yet today is worth looking at. <laughs> so you claim, sir. However, here we go. Uh, however, you have not yet seen this. And push into his tentacles, transforming oh. them into swollen... Oh. Those are his eyes! Oh. Those are his eyes! Imagine and if your eyes were being all bloggled out to... Of the vegetation. I can! That's what's horrible! I can imagine all of it! 
I look, he's just, he's just like, I must go to where birds will eat me. He's at oh my god, I don't even like looking at that. Come on, dude, seriously. tentacles mimic a maggot. The perfect. That is not right. Next host. He's gone. He's gone. He's blocking with his feet. And what I love now, now, okay, now this is some cheesy filmmaking right here. This is they got a bird and they set out some bird seed and they put on like a, a hilarious filter because they're like, "What must the snail be seeing? This? Well, I mean, he's seeing that, but dun dun dun." The snail will likely survive this attack, but more parasites are growing inside its body and will move into its regenerated tentacles. I would like to reiterate what just got spoken. It will that, likely survive that's it. That's real bad. It will likely survive it, but has other parasites. So what's worse than experiencing this? Experiencing it over Fixing and it over and over. And it's over like, oh, over. finally, my eyes have grown back. Let's see, what should I do? I know, oh, must go get eaten. How unreal is that stuff? Uh, oh, body that's brush, bad news. Body brush. That's very bad news. <laughs> My wife, Body Brushman, I guess, is watching because she just twittered two words, intelligent design. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, this is an indication of, uh, this is evidence against evolution. Clearly, this was designed <laughs> as some kind of cruel joke. Uh, and this last oh, guy. Thank, thank you, Bonnie, for lightening the mood. Oh. Uh, and then this guy's pretty crazy. Mind control. No, there's more. God, no. This is the last one. This is the last one. <clears throat> this is the last one. Yeah, you guys, this is good. Uh, the Emerald Jewel Wasp, he strikes once in a cockroach, right? To, to, to tell him the STFU. First he's just like, bah, that's it. Shut up. And, then, and the cockroach is just like, sorry, dude, sorry, dude. And he can't move the top half of his body. And then once the cockroach is not moving anymore, he crawls up and he gets in real sweet. And then he stings him with some special venom in the brain that makes a zombie cockroach. Where the where the cockroach does whatever. Uh, yeah, oh man, Dodd Vickers is sending in suggestions for the next phase. This is all taking a very dark turn. And yes, I have Dodd Vickers. Maybe we will. Maybe there'll be a freak show hour. But this is supposed to be an hour about failure. Uh, anyway, zombie cockroach then follows this guy into a burrow because this guy tells him to. This guy's like, now you're gonna go in this burrow, and the and the and the cockroach is like, I hear and obey. And then uh, he's like, now that you're in this, uh, now that you're in this burrow, I'm going to inject my young into your freaking body, and you will lay there while they eat you from the inside out because they like fresh food. Can you believe that? Uh, that's a, oh my god! I, I keep putting myself in the place of these poor little insects, and it's just killing me. Like I can't. I can't fathom being eaten from the inside out while I just lay there, and nor should I have to fathom that, but here I am stuck in this freak show world that I can't escape, and I want nothing more than to not think about all of these parasites, but, and Brian <laughs> Brush would be feeding my eyeballs to these I was, parasites. I was about to say, the, the, the freak show world, of course, being this show, <laughs> which is a good point. We should remind the people that you're watching the BB Live show. If you'd like to participate, why don't you call in? Let's take some questions about zombie parasites and uh, cockroaches at uh, BB Live Show. You can actually Skype in to BB Live Show or give us a call 866-462-4424. That's 866-4-MAGIC-4 if you just hate numbers like I do. So then that way you're saying only left. All right. So let's do this. Uh, just to wrap things up, we do have we do have the money shot here. Of The wasp twists its body around the roach so it can sting into its brain and inject the zombifying mixture. The roach's breathing slows. It uh, makes by the way, no I cannot remember the last time I heard that phrase. To inject the <laughs> zombifying mixture. Move <laughs> to escape. This brain sting causes a dramatic behavioral change in the cockroach, basically turning it into a zombie. Wasp venom is precisely engineered to shut down signals carried by a key brain chemical called dopamine. In humans and other animals, dopamine is. Uh, a we don't need to be told what dopamine is. Here you go. Cut to the cut to the zombie. There you go. Here's zombie. Use feeding, Honest to goodness. But parasitoids use it for something totally different. They actually use. First of all, first of all, this shot. What what are they thinking? What is it? Is like <clears throat> we'd like to interview you, and you're talking about 
roaches. So why don't we do it on the beach? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Reproduction. Inside the burrow, the wasp lays her egg on the roach. With survival of her offspring at stake, the wasp's precision now... All right, yeah, then the money shot is she builds the burrow, the cask of Amontillado right there. Even as the newly hatched larva starts to eat it alive. Well, and uh, and egg. then the money shot is full-on, full-on Aliens movie moment here. Too much there it is. And it would immediately oh, no, wait, no, he's... Oh, that's, oh, no, 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 that's not him horrible. coming out. There we go. That's the Here aliens moment right Mara there. Actually, starting to oh. grow into the cockroaches <laughs> fall inside and continue oh. to feed. All right. So uh, let me make it clear that none of this was what I had intended this show to be about. I apologize. <laughs> but but the point is, is I woke up early and I read that, didn't so much fall back asleep. So I spent all day on like three and a half hours of sleep, um, which I'm pretty sure is all you're getting tonight, there, Brett. I was so excited about sleeping tonight, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, oh, by the man. way, we'll, we'll look at Tree Man later, but I did promise you guys that we would show you the secret of, uh, of the pedo hair. Um, allow me to give you guys... Uh, now, you didn't tune in last night, right? So you have no idea what we're talking about with this. Me? No. Yeah. What do you think of that? Does that do anything for what you? What the holy hell balls is that? <laughs> Damn, uh -huh. Is that a parasite on his <laughs> toe? Right, you have to take care of those things. It's oh, gonna lead dear, you to the water, what have we die. here? Or young children. Could it be Brian's original haircut? All right, I tell you what, we're actually going to share the entire story, but first we're going to take a little break. Uh, I want to hear another killer mashup from DJ Z. Um, let's do this. I'm gonna. We're going to play the whole song, and we'll take a little break while we do it. But uh, I'm going to let you pick. Do you want to hear um, Queen Eleanor, uh, Single Ladies' Choice, or Circus Gets Low? Circus Gets Low, hands down. All right. this one or hear a different one let's move on all right uh hold on uh jordan call me back later on buddy uh let's do i want to hear this queen eleanor because i think it might be good i hope it will be holy cow that's pretty good Socks in the night when 
pretty good. It's not quite as good as the first one we listened to. Did you hear the first one, the Sweet Child of Kung Fu or whatever, Kung Fu Child? Yes, that one was classic. Yeah, I think that one's still my favorite. But I think this one's pretty good. stuff if I give them after the show could you uh, could you post these on the store on the on the on the uh, thingy we'll see about that uh, okay Travis says we can't we'll post links to all this stuff uh, but first I did make a, a promise uh, involving a pedophile haircut uh, so you did not watch the show last night is that is that correct mr. Brett and right. first of all good on you good on you for not looking at that tragedy it was it was really Something tra- tra- terrible, uh, and and not that not was that, that it wasn't with the new computer. Well, what happened was is I I set everything up on the new computer, everything worked, and in a moment of hubris, I twittered out, "Got the quad core. Let's see if we can break this thing." And this is the only thing that was in my mind. <laughs> that little figure right there was all I thought. I was like, "Got the quad core. Let's bring it." And uh, we lasted exactly two freaking sentence seconds. <clears throat> in fact. We crashed so hard, I couldn't even start VidBlaster. <laughs> it was terrible, and I actually pulled one little USB cam and set it up, and I and I wrote down stuff that I held up underneath the camera, like in, in place of all these graphics. <laughs> I actually just would, would jot down stuff, and of course, this is where... Hang on, sorry for that uh, clackety sound. Uh, I believe this was the highlight when we drew a portrait of Daniel Garcicles. That was... Uh, that was pretty good. So anyway, it ended up being a pretty good time, but it was a freaking disaster. There is no, there is no doubt about that. Uh, okay, but one of the things that I teased last night that we started talking about was I wanted to talk about my first failure. Or not my first, my first, I don't even want to call it a failure. Basically, here's the background on the story. Before there was scam school, before Brian decided that he loved the internet and, and up yours traditional television, he uh, uh, got a pilot deal, or not, a development deal with Court TV. And uh, I had a lot of ideas. Uh, oh, son of a gun. I just got uh, got a text saying, I'm late to the show. Has anyone pointed out that you're on the front page? Great. It's going to only go downhill from here. That's where it always goes. Hey, uh, we're at 141 in the chat room right ah, now. Yeah, well, good. Everyone can watch uh, my pedophile haircut that's about to happen. So here's what happened. I was approached to, uh, there was somebody who really dug what I was about at Court TV. They're like, we love your youthful energy. And, you know, I'm, I got the punk rock hair, and I've got this crazy skeptical lecture where I'm talking about busting the paranormal, that kind of thing. And they say, we really love what you're doing. We want to bring that energy to Court TV to get our, because our demographic tends to skew older. We want to get more people in- interested. And so we, uh, 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 we start working on some ideas, and uh, uh, my champion leaves to go to the Discovery Channel. And then later she went to uh, – uh, I think she's still at the Sundance Channel. But she was the one who got me, and I got handed off to somebody else who, uh, who didn't quite get what I was about. You know, She was just like, oh, I get it. You do magic. So there needs to be lots of zazz and wow. I mean, there's all this, this crazy – marketing TV talk that drives me absolutely batshit insane. And and she, uh, uh, so anyway, she inherited the project, and uh, I proposed all these amazing ideas for, it was, it was loosely going to be about scams and cons, in the same ballpark as Scam School, but a different format and a different focus. I wanted to focus more on kind of the Penn and Teller's bullshit type thing, uh, busting the paranormal, that kind of thing. But, uh, and then, uh, but then what happened was, they are like, yeah, let's steer clear of all that woo-woo stuff and instead uh, do these two ideas. Well, why these two? These are not the best ideas. They're like, yes, but they're the cheapest. I'm like, okay, well, I guess we'll shoot the two cheapest ideas that I had. And uh, they're like, great. And so I show up, and literally the day I showed up, they're like, listen, our demographic tends to be a little bit older. By the way... If you want to get people to laugh at me, now's the time to Twitter out to have them tune in. 
because because in just a moment I'm about to play this. Literally the night before, they're like, listen, we need you to comb your hair. Now the thing is, I have a very it's very dedicated cut. It's shaved on the side and it's thin at the edges. Looks ridiculous when you when you try to put it down. Plus, there's like a week's worth of wax in there. I I, I can wash it eight times and it'll still go. And so they're like, we need you to wash to 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 comb your hair and put on this sweater. And uh, now this is my first dance with mass media. Put on this sweater. Put on this sweater. This is my first dance with with oh, mass television, media. You stupid stupid bastards. <laughs> And so I'm like, you know what? These guys are professionals. They know. They brought us entertainment and I'm sure won awards and is very impressive and stuff. And so I say yes to everything. And uh, they got they sort of cut the nuts off of the thing. Uh, and, and I show up. And here's the other mistake I made is I've since learned that it's like when you own a project, you need to own it all the way. It needs to be your name, your attitude, your style. It needs to come from the heart. Otherwise, it's total BS and you're going to get nothing from it. So I... I, idiot, you know, getting started, like, well, they have writers. They told me they had a writer on staff. So the writer will be the one who writes. And uh, so I sent them the treatment and the outline and the, and the setup of how the episode should go. Not so much with stuff written. They're like, okay, you just talk to this person and come up with something. And I had never, now, now nowadays that wouldn't scare me nearly as much because I've done scam school and I understand scam school. And, I, and I've got a place and an idea and a system and a character. I had none of those. So the entire time you're watching this, you're going to hear two things. First of all, totally dead, flat delivery. You could tell I'm reading somebody else's lines and trying to find life in them because they're not words I would say. Oh, look, CJ Johnson just tuned in. So this will be good. CJ, you came in just at the right time to uh, to see the pedophile haircut. <laughs> and so, uh, and second, secondly, you're going to notice that that everything's awkward and weird. Uh, this is not how I intended it to. This is what happens when you get designed by committee and you get somebody at the top who has one idea and somebody at, in the trenches who has a completely different idea as to how stuff should go and you end up with something like this. We'll watch and I'll pause for commentary. Here we go. <laughs> Most of us have pretty normal lives. We go to work, grab coffee in a newspaper, maybe a bagel to go with it. Guess what? Your life might seem pretty snug and cozy. But it's not. These days there are scam artists, liars, and swindlers all over the place. Your home, your job, your computer, your phone, nowhere is safe. They steal your identity. They lie to you, rob you blind. It could be this guy. Maybe it's her. It could even be me. My name is Brian Brush. Yeah, I know. I look about 18 <laughs> years old. All right, all right, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hang on. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> would you goddamn it? <laughs> Screw you, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> all I'm saying, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the point is, is like, first of all, you can hear, it's like, these are clearly lines somebody else has written, and I'm trying to figure out what to say. I'm focused oh. on that. You guys are still laughing at my awesome pedophile hair. Which, by the way, can I point out real quick the irony that we're laughing at the fact that my hair doesn't look like this? How wrong is that? <laughs> How messed up is that? That is good. All right, so here we go. Here's the, here's the. the last guy you'd expect to know everything about cons, swindles, and scams. But that's my secret weapon. I blend in. I push buttons. I infiltrate. I've been doing... I infiltrate. I am I am Sam Fisher. I mean, come on. It's like, is that ever something that you would hear me say about myself? But it's like, I am like the kung fu mind grip of scamology. That is... Not only is that horrible, but what is that shot in particular? Go back, go back, go back. What is that shot? This what is, are you trying to convey with that image? Uh, that I'll is, tell you. That is a man, that is a bald 17-year-old <laughs> who bought this, who probably scammed his way into that toupee right there. That, uh, that I don't know where you get that, Chinatown maybe, that Chinatown toupee, and he's trying to hawk cigars with his trench coat. I tell you, <clears throat> uh, I tell you what it is, the subtext of this is, a uh, hey, little boy. You like candy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. All right. This for more than 10 years. I even wrote a book about it. And now I'm going to show you how it's done. Oh. All 
All right, and I think this is pretty much how far we got last night. Uh, well, no, I guess that we did. We got to the pedophile van and stuff. And again, the setup is they, 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 they've got this chick, and they're like, hey, go talk to this chick. Do the setup. Go. Go nuts. Go, 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 go. And uh, this Here's is what a nice happened. street in a typical small town. People are friendly around here. They're honest. It's not going to be easy to pull off a con in this town, but I love a challenge. And I'm going to use everyday people right off the street as my accomplices. <coughs> This is Gina. She's attractive and intelligent, the perfect accomplice. So have you ever uh, pulled a scam before? Uh, hold on. And again, again, no script, no preparation. I had shows the day before and the day after, and they're like, no, 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 we got it. We got to take care of you. Just, you just show up and, and, you know, we'll take care of everything. And then they're like, yeah, sit down, talk to her, go nuts. And so uh, here we go. A scam? Like yeah, a scam, swim. Ah. Uh? Ah. <laughs> yeah, no. Look at that. The hair won't even stay Maybe down. Maybe I can give you a strychnine laced milkshake. Yeah, uh, you like sausages? <laughs> uh, guys? Yeah, yeah, Every day? yeah, they buy you drinks for free, right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to see a, a trick today. little girl. It basically boils down to taking a $3 trinket and selling it for hundreds of dollars. Are you no. with me? Okay. All right, yeah. now in this case, I spare no expense. Oh Went all the way to a local uh, discount shop and bought this <laughs> <Come on. laughs> $3 cubic zirconia. All right. We're going to go to a local business. You are going to go in and be completely panicked. Now, this is the part where you really need to sell it. You need to convince them that you've lost. Hey, uh, can I point out real fast, not only is this the worst haircut of the world, but, like, literally, they were like, uh, before we got started, they are like, oh, no, hold on, let me, let me. There we go. Okay, now you're ready. This is this is all done on purpose. This is at their request. Somebody looked at this and said, "Hey, you know, it'd be way better than this. This <laughs> on purpose. Come on." Say, it doesn't even look like it's attached to your head, head. dude. It's not exactly probably. I mean, how? Look at that. <laughs> come on. I would look better bald. <laughs> And then the, and the sweater just, come on, dude. Cosby show time. Are you really? All right. Oh, man. I'm the lord of the scam of Cosby. Ring is missing and then there's a reward. Uh, I will come back. I'll find your ring. And this guy, knowing that there's a $500 reward, will probably be very flexible in how much you'd want to buy it off of me for. Can you handle it? I think I can. Okay. And again, it is, you know, it is like, it is like here we are saying this for the eighth time. And she's all like, uh, they're like, yeah, kind of act like you're getting it. You, you know, like, to buy she's it like, mm, can that's you right. It? I think I can. <laughs> okay, well, let's do this. All right. All right. Oh, oh yeah. And I got to explain this, too. Here's the other thing. Um, you know, I, you know me. Everything I want to do is comes from a very self-deprecating. I'm with you guys. If, if we're going to do something like this, it's going to be like, here's this scam. Dude, let's try it and see if it actually works. Hold on, we actually have somebody calling in here. Hey, it's Brian. What's going on? Oh, dude, hold on. We got to get... It's O-Doctor, who always has pithy comments. How you doing, O-Doctor? I'm living it up. You're freaking me out right now. <laughs> dude, you're freaking me out. <laughs> Come on. No, I, just... I, swear to, I swear to God. I, I, I always thought, like, what would your hair look like? I never want to see that again. <laughs> I what? need you to post that so we download it. I swear to God. Oh, my God. Like, it doesn't even look like you. It looks like Doogie Howser on crack after he's lost the <laughs> stop for 12 years. Hey, dude. And now he's hustling dude. in the street. <laughs> At least Doogie Howser <laughs> won Best Actor for a web series. I mean, I, uh... They, they gave you a Burton Ernie sweater. That, dude, that is a Burton Ernie sweater. That's right on. Oh, it's <laughs> green and... Oh, it's so sad. It's All right. So sad. All right. Sit, sit, oh. sit tight, old doctor. I'm going to drop you off here. Call back if you got something All else. Right. Uh, but, the, but the uh, uh, okay, so let me explain something. Uh, you know me, I don't ever like. I'm not top down. I'm bottom up, right? It's like let's do this together. Let's make this happen. Uh, they're very much top down. They're like, no, no, no. You need to sell it. Like you're super cool. And in fact, we'll have like this James Bond sequence where you've got rigs of super high tech stuff. And it's like I'm looking at. I'm like, these are those funny glasses I saw used in Candid Camera in 1995. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, we'll act like we'll act like this is all high tech, right, so and uh, office, and this is what we got. We'll play with high tech toys. Huh? High tech pedo right, van, you. right there. 
in order for us to follow. These are all cons from like 1920 too. Like the whole idea is you shouldn't need any of this stuff, right? I well, I agree. I mean, like that's that's the whole thing. They didn't they didn't you know. Uh, it's like I want to I want to say this is all so old it's new but uh, but but they're all like no 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 it's all new it's all underground nobody's ever seen any of this before you're the guy who discovered it and you're from the streets I mean it was crazy vanilla ice moment it was it oh was my in- god yeah no one there. from the yeah. streets yeah, wears their the hair like that uh, uh, me mm. uh, we've got a screw you slightly less subtle arrangement <laughs> does I have a camera yes yeah. uh, camera and a microphone, so both of us are going to be able to capture everything here. Oh, so say right. hello. Hey. Yeah. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Excellent. You ready to do this? Yeah. All right, awesome. let's go. Wow, right, no, real, those real are the worst quick. looking. Those might as well be Groucho Marx glasses. That's crazy. Why not just put a big bulbous nose and a little fluffy mustache on there? <laughs> this is what the hip underground is doing. Okay, now first of all, let me say, uh, at this point, it sucks a little bit less. You've already gotten over the idiocy of the of the hair and the setup and all that stuff. But this is the moment when um, uh, we actually went out and committed crime. And again, idiot Brian. Oh, TV, TV knows what they're doing. They prearrange stuff. They call the venue. They work stuff out in advance. None of that. No permits. No nothing. Just Brian go out there and commit crime, which I had never done before. <laughs> and and this was kind of cool. Now the, the the only thing is, uh, well actually we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get to it here. But uh, again, forgive forgive the my delivery of the writing. Imagine you're working one of these stores, or maybe you're just walking down the street, and Gina comes up to you. Wouldn't you want to help her? Did someone find a ring? She was find a ring. It just must have slipped off. It was so cold. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. How much do I have? Oh my god, I have like, I've got at least $500. Please, if anybody finds it, please, can you call me? I've got $500. Antique ring. It's about it's platinum. Oh, thank you so much. It's all about the details, the size of the ring, the phone number, panicky but not hysterical, and you always flash the cash. Hey, did you find a ring? It was an engagement ring, an antique engagement ring. You didn't find it? I've got at least $500. Just if anybody turns it in, please call me, okay? $500. I've got, yeah, just please call me and it's, I, it's all yours. $500. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That was the other thing that I recommended. I, I, I said, and, and again, uh, this sounds, um, I, I, as, as Ali G would say, a bit racialist, but, uh, but I was like, what you're looking <coughs> for is somebody who who doesn't care, who has antipathy. And I said, you're looking for uh, maybe maybe an immigrant guy who owns a, uh, a, a, a fast, uh, a, a quickie mart type thing. Somebody who's gonna be much more interested in scoring the money than, than being helpful or, or whatever. And, uh, and sure enough, yeah, what's that, what's that cat? Was there a cat? Do you have a cat? That's my, that's my end. There's a, that's Rocky, Rocky okay. the cat. All right, well, that was, that was a little bit weird. We need Rock. All right, moving on. Oh, look, we did it. We had our first, at one hour and 32 minutes, we had our first uh, stream choke. It's that son of a bitch and cat. The cat. All bad right. luck. No, that's Orange cool. cats are bad luck. No, Let me that's... get his ass out of here. But, but luckily, we've done this enough that we know how to recover it. So we still have, we still have audio going. You guys should be able to hear audio. Do you guys hear audio in the chat room? Thumbs up if you guys hear audio still. That's right. it. Yes. All right. And uh, luckily, this is less of a disaster than it might have been. Uh, but I am going to have to actually forward the video back to find the right spot. Uh, let me make sure. There we go. And you guys can you guys can hear audio now. And we're back. How's everything look? Actually, I don't know if we are back. Oh, wait, no, i got to start the stream. There we go. Now everything's back. Ha-ha! There we go. So that's, uh, that's my fault. Sorry about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak with these and see if I can get back both of, the, uh, both of the video. There's one. And there's the other. There we go. And so we'll just switch those. That'll be no big deal. All right, so uh, uh, fast-forwarding back to where we were. 
uh, here we are, and she's doing the setup, and uh, just please, just remember please, that. Please call me, okay? I've got, yeah, just please call me, and it's, I, it's all yours. $500 is a lot of money. Would you give it to a stranger? What do you say? You give him 500 Yeah, if someone turns my ring, and if you find my ring, please, I'll give you $500. That's what I have on me. I've got at least $500. Oh, thank you so right. much. Did anybody find a ring? I lost my engagement ring. Yeah. Did you guys uh, find it? Easy, uneasy. I'll tell you what, if I had seen it, I would have picked it up. Can I look in here? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, my God. You know, I've got at least $500. I'll pay you $500. Please look yes, for it and yes. call me, and I'll give you $500 cash. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Right. Gina's a natural. She's planted the seed and gotten everyone's attention. Now it's my turn. Oh, did we freeze again? We sure did. Son of a pisser. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, man, this is the best part, too. Um, all right, let me try killing this. See if we get back. I think I think I made a mistake when I killed it last time. It is. <laughs> everyone says it's the damn cat. Uh, by the way, my favorite. My the cat's favorite, gone. My new, apparently, our new catchphrase is, uh, you fool, back here at the. Uh, <laughs> did, you, did you see the Tonight Show thing? Did you see that? Amtrak I did. Oh, I saw Part of it. I think I saw the whole thing. Oh. I definitely saw a knife go through Brian Brushwood's hand. Yeah, but that happens all the time. No be you know, sloppy hand job is what <laughs> they say. Uh, okay, so let me try resuming this. Let's see what happens. Wait for it. Look at all these people trashing poor Rocky. <laughs> Granted, Rocky is kind of a son of a bitch, but still. Uh, okay, do you guys have audio? We got audio back? We'll see. Did Brian just say sloppy hand job? Yeah, I did. That was a, that was a reference to a bit that somebody else had written um, that uh, that it was going to be about. All right. Hold on. Meanwhile, other people are trying to send me so more mashups. One, okay. the, one of the Go funniest ahead. things about this whole rockin' thing uh, right now. Yeah. Not rockin' is in. Hold on. Look, let me start over. Bottom line, I have also done a show for um, uh, for Court TV. No way! Did it go as well as mine? Yeah, it wasn't venture? my own show. I was I was like the male lead on an episode of Psychic Detectives way back when. No kidding. All right. We'll, yeah. we'll talk. We'll Believe talk it or about not. This. I was uh, I was a 36 year old dad who had just lost his son and to the the deadly hands of his of his girlfriend. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's see. Let's see. This is where where stuff actually gets pretty good. Is uh, is where the idea. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the con, uh, you uh, uh, somebody goes in. She says she's lost a ring. She'll give a big cash reward for it. Somebody else finds it and then uh, and then and then sells it at a. Uh, what appears to be a loss, but is actually a big, big profit. Here we go. Dude, check this out. Yeah, what? Is it yours? Yeah, yeah please give that to me now. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have a lady looking for that. Do you want to the ring? What? Well, yeah. That's it. Please leave it with us. We know who it belongs to. I mean, is there a finder's fee? There's no finder's fee. Don't aggravate me over this. The woman's freaking She's freaking out. Well, oh, come on. Look, look I got to catch a plane. Look. Uh, I'm going to catch more than a plane. You're going to catch more than a plane. Are you threatening me? I'm not threatening you. Oh, come me on, a... wait, wait. You know you're grabbing. Wait. Don't grab it, it out of my... It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you either. Every con runs the risk of a deal going sour. And sometimes, that means knowing when to run. Yeah, dude, that guy was going to kick my ass. He was not happy. <laughs> guys doing... Dude. I'll give it to me. What is it yours? Well, yeah, it's, it's yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is there a finder's fee? No, no, no. no, no. There's no finder's fee? What do you mean? I don't know. Normally when you find something valuable, someone wants to give you a reward. She didn't offer any kind of reward at all, huh? Wow. No reward? No phone number? I tell you what, look, if you guys will give me 50 bucks. Okay, how about this? Alright, All right, thank you. He's giving me 50 bucks to get out of the way. Do that four or five times, and you've got yourself a sweet payday. That's cool. All right, you guys take care. He thinks he just made a quick 400 bucks. Bet he can't wait to call Gina. And again, it's like, to me, it's like it's done. This is the moment we should be having high fives outside the establishment. Uh, but instead, they totally wanted this 
gotcha. Like like the, the catchphrase that kept popping in my mind, they didn't say this, but it was clear that what they wanted was, you just got scammed. You know? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so this painful moment Not comes so afterwards. Fast. All right, I've got a secret to tell you guys. <laughs> oh, look, and it froze. And you guys... And we're frozen. And if all goes oh, well... Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, somebody in the <laughs> chat room pointed out that it's like, uh, that, that it's this total, you just got punked moment. And that's, that's clearly what they were going for, uh, much to my chagrin and consternation. It's not often you get to say both of those words in the same... In the same. So, yeah. By the way, somebody points out. It's that not we, often you get to say consternation. Period. Uh, somebody pointed out that we can no longer say that we can no longer say it if all goes well. We have to start saying and if all goes as usual. <laughs> every time that we have something crater on us. Well, let me see what's up with this. Um, so tell me again about your. Uh, what was it that you were in? Psychic detectives. It was a uh, yeah. Psychic detectives. It was the craziest thing ever. It's my only brush with acting as it were, and uh, it was because I was, I was just a PA on this one shoot that happened to be blowing through town. I needed a couple extra bucks, and uh, I, I had done all the research on this show they were going to be shooting, and uh, they, they were just like, hey, show up on Monday. We might need an extra. If nothing else, you get some craft services. And, and that alone so was enough to get rock. you in there, right? Yeah, that's all it takes, man. I was, I was on a rock with my roast beef sandwich enjoying life. <laughs> and then uh, this this associate producer shows up, and she's like, "Brett, the male lead didn't show up today. We need you to play the dad." Which and is like every like, actor's kidding? it's every actor's fantasy, dude. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, and I was terrified. Like this was well before. Am well, I guess it wasn't that. It was before Amtrak. It was before I spent any kind of time in front of a camera. And uh, this lady's like, "We need you to do this shoot." Uh, it'll be pretty far from the camera, so it won't matter. We can just uh, edit in the other guy's stuff later. We just need you to look really concerned and uh, try not to say anything. And I was like, <laughs> all right, easy enough. And so I'm sitting on this rock trying to look concerned because apparently my, my – uh, concerned, right? Literally the word she used, concerned. And in theory, my kid is being dredged out of a river 50 feet from me. <laughs> You're like, I, and, uh, I'm deeply concerned <laughs> about this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Yeah, so so look concerned, right? And then uh, the day's shoot ends, they still haven't gotten a hold of this guy, and they're like, Brett, we, we need you to go to this address tomorrow so we can reshoot all the stuff we shot with the other guy. And I was like, all right, now you're talking crazy. And uh, then I got to the house, they mic me up, and then that's when I start like, freaking out. I'm like, you guys understand that I'm a designer, not an actor, right? <laughs> and they're like, Brett, today we need you to act like you're an actor. <laughs> that's totally a movie line. It's like, today you'll act like it. <laughs> All right, let's play this while this is still a sweet payday. That's cool. All right, you guys take care. He thinks he just made a quick 400 bucks. Bet he can't wait to call Gina. Not so fast. All right, I've got a secret to tell you guys. <laughs> My name is Brian Brushman, and you guys have actually fallen victim to a great what con. It's brilliant. What are you talking about? These guys had no idea that Gina and I were in cahoots. And that priceless ring, cubic zirconia. Why is he taking our picture? Why is he taking our picture? These aren't bad guys. They saw their chance and they took it. Why are you going to do this? Could be a diamond ring, a gold chain, or even a Sony PlayStation. But when something cool drops in your lap, chances are it's really hot. <laughs> All right, so this one, this one was actually pretty good. I, again, forgive the terribly stilted conversation. God damn, look at that hair. You could tell this is later in the day, <laughs> and it's trying to go back up on its own. Like, it's not designed to go that way. It's ridiculous. Well, hi there. My name's hi. Brian. What's your name? Cassidy. Yes, Little oh, girl. No. <laughs> <Michelle>. <laughs> So we got the pedo hair uh, and a 12 year and 8 year old. 8 year olds, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, did we freeze again? Oh, we froze it. What's funny is I look over, I look over, and everyone's screaming, no! And I assume they're saying no to the fact that a pedophile is about to approach an eight-year-old. And what they're doing is they're shouting, no! It locked up again. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that is oh, hilarious. Oh, wow. So uh, what is all this hip hop? Is this blasters shenanigans? We uh, have a fancy yeah. new computer. I, I, it's certainly not. I, at this point, I think we can rule out the, uh, the the certainly the CPU cycles. I don't know what it is that's exactly hurting its feelings, uh, but something certainly has it. 
in a tizzy. But, uh, you know, we'll, uh, I'm just glad that we got this far before everything went to total crap. I mean, it, it, I cannot <laughs> convey to you how much it sucked. Ooh, this is good. I actually got back all the. This isn't total time. crap yet. This is this is just going back down to par for the course. I think we're still no, on yeah. top for the day. That's that's a really good point. Uh, let me do this. I'm gonna start the stream. We're gonna turn this on. And there you are. And <laughs> we'll turn. This on. I love AP Magic over here in the chat room. This must be the puppy in the van scam. Am I right? The puppy in the van scam. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna cross my fingers. And uh, by the way, we're we're two thirds of the way through the video now, so I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that things will work. Uh, so let's go back to approaching the little girl. Well, hi there. My name hi. is Brian. What's your name? Cassidy. Cassidy, Cassidy, Cassidy and you are so creepy. Michelle. It's a pleasure. Hey, we're gonna be doing a scam here today called the Birthday Twenty. Sound interesting? <laughs> okay. Now it involves you and I'm all condescending a and spending money. Can you handle mm -hmm. that part so far? Yep. Good. We're going to give you $10 and send you inside a store to buy some little item, maybe a pack of gum or something. Okay. All right? <laughs> get your change. You get about $9 of change and walk outside. Wait just a little bit, and then we're going to send you back in. When you go in the second time, I want you to ask them really nicely and say, I'm sorry, I think you gave me the wrong amount of change. And they'll say, no, you gave us $10 and we gave you 9 back. To which you reply, no, it was my special birthday money. It even said on the back, it said, Happy Birthday, Cassidy. And when they check inside the register, they'll find a $20 bill that says exactly that inside. Because what they don't know is that I'll go in before you and spend some money using that $20. And they'll feel so bad that they'll give you 10 more dollars. You think you can handle this? Yeah. All right, give me five. Let's go do this. Let's go do it, little girl. Give me five. <laughs> you and me, let's go do this. <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> you never want to go straight to the mark. You've got to blend in, hang around a bit, be a chameleon. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm going to get him this. He loves, he's trying to learn some card tricks. He loves card stuff. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Take care, have a good one. The money's planted. You just now got Cassidy scammed. Now is going to go inside and get it back. With interest. How much is this? Three seventy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Excuse me, you gave me the wrong change. No, I did the right change. No, I did twenty dollars. No, you give me 10. No, 20. No, I use the 10. Look at her go. I don't have any 10s, and you gave me the only 10 that I have. Yeah, but um, there's a $20 in there that says, Happy Birthday, Cassidy. No, I don't have that one. She's relentless. Yeah, two 10s. This is the last 20 I have. Yeah, look on the back. That a girl. Look, Happy Birthday, Cassidy. This cashier is not a plant. She's never even seen Cassidy and has no idea she was just ripped off. 20, bitch. I'll give her my fucking money. <laughs> my name is Brian Brush. What we don't Cassidy see is the follow-up follow episode where this girl is 20, this girl is 20 years old and in juvie and is shot full of heroin and will never survive life on the streets again. <laughs> and you have me to thank for that, sir. <laughs> Day 20. She walked out of that store with 10 bucks of their money. It might seem small and innocent, but it adds up big time. Well, what convinced like you that she was right? She told me and said, Happy birthday, Catherine. Okay. <laughs> and we just want you guys to be aware that even somebody adorable and tidy can, uh, can be trying to pull a fast one on you. Sweetness and innocence are a con man's best friend, and they could be your worst enemy. Oh my god, this writing is killing me. Cameras, let's go. You heard me, lady. Come on. Let's get a chop chop, people. <laughs> Everyone knows about three card Monty and the shell game. That's yeah. Movie. These days, cons are way more sophisticated than that. I'm going to take you to places you've never been and show you all kinds of ways that people are swindling you. Cons are happening every minute of every day all over the country. I'll see you soon. Don't say I didn't warn you. Some people, uh, by the way, uh, holy cow. Um, Man, that was really painful. That was like re revisiting the scene of a crime. That was very difficult. Uh, although I tell you, it was it was pretty cool to actually uh, to actually. I mean, we did crime. That part was cool. But uh, man, dressing like a pedophile and saying a bunch of stilted uh, lines that that weren't really me. That was uh, that was a little bit difficult. 
Comments? Oh, man. That's, that's fun, though. I've always wanted to have that excuse to actually pull off real crime and not get arrested for it. Wow. Uh, okay, let's do this. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to stop recording the actual episode uh, at this point because this was pretty good in spite of the, the crashes. I do want to archive it now while we still have it. So uh, I'm going to stop recording now. You want to say, say goodbye, Brett? Goodbye, Brett. All right. Don't forget that you can check us out at uh, schwood.com. Follow up on future episodes at twitter.com slash schwood. My name is Brian Brushwood. You've been watching the BB Live Show. And that, I guess, you know what? We should play one more, one more of these songs, huh? Let's do... Uh, Let's do, um, man, I guess we'll do this one. Good time, folks. Stick around.